My name is Matt Pierce, and I'm demonstrating a real-time ray tracer that I wrote called Speed Tracer. It's a KD tree-based polygon tracer. It traces triangles only, no curved surfaces. A little different than other ray tracers, but it allows it to do some pretty significantly impressive things in real time. I'm going to load up a model here that's 525,000 triangles at a resolution of 640 by 360. It takes a little bit of time to load. And there we go. This is a Lucy statue. It uh, comes from the, I think, the Georgia Institute of Technology Large Models Archive. Uh, it's scanned from a real life physical statue, so there's all sorts of little nicks and imperfections in it, which creates some nice lighting. It's rotating at about seven or eight frames per second now, 525,000 triangles, no levels of detail. Everything is rendered every frame. Um, it's got two point light sources and a fog shading across the surface. Uh, constant ambient term. What I can do though, I can turn on ambient occlusion, which is unavailable on any GPU based solution. This drops the frame rate down to about two frames per second, but you can see all of those shaded details really come to life. And to demonstrate that, let me go into a different view mode. This is the KD tree visualization. KD tree is what makes all of this possible. It's a way of subdividing space recursively, and each square you see represents a leaf node on that tree. The darker squares have fewer triangles, the lighter squares have more. Uh, as you can tell from how fast this is moving, KD tree traversal is almost trivially fast. What you're looking at is the backside of the model. The two point light sources are on the opposite end with a constant ambient term. All of this is completely lost. There's no detail visible here, but with ambient occlusion shading, the details in shaded areas that receive no direct light from the point light sources come to life. Um, you might notice there's a lot of grit to it. I anti-alias by jittering the viewport between a one and a half pixel radius and I collect multiple frames together in order to get it multiple subsamples per pixel. Uh, it's probably not the most elegant way to do this. There are probably much better, more automatic ways to do it, but this is probably the, the most intuitive way for me to put this into a real-time ray tracer. This object is much simpler. Uh, it contains about uh, 30,000, 32,000 triangles. Uh, the KD tree is obviously much simpler. And it looks like this tiny little house, in fact. It's got a little roof, got some awnings, or some eaves rather, and it's got some windows. Now if we go into one of these windows, we will see some shapes start to develop. Some bookshelves, a chair, a little Star Wars poster on the wall. You can see the floor reflects all of this. What I'm going to do though, I'm going into what I'm calling radiosity cache mode. Currently the cache is empty, so we have a black screen, which is confusing the heck out of the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to start filling the cache. It's going to make one pass with this very low polygon model. It takes about 15 seconds, and I'm trying to talk my way through it. It collects the ambient light from the lighting environment. I'm going to up the exposure here so you can see that and saves one light value per polygon, telling you how much light that polygon has received. We can then run that again. Uh, subsequent passes are faster because we only need that accuracy for the environment map. And now it'll tell me how much light is coming in, both from the environment map and from the other triangles in the scene. Each pass is one more level in those in that recursive radiosity function. And with just 32,000 triangles in this scene, that tends to go pretty quickly. You can see as the, the image is brightening more and more, 
as we get more and more levels into this recursive lighting function. I'm going to go about 8, 9, or 10 levels deep here. Uh, as you can tell, we're working completely in HDR, so uh, the window is completely blown out in this image, and that's because we brightened it enough to actually get some detail in the room. Uh, this mode actually runs pretty quick when you're just visualizing the cache, uh, because we're not doing any real-time lighting, we're just displaying what's been cached. And it's just a single lookup or ray trace. Um, but of course there's a secondary lookup when you're reflecting off of another surface. Uh, this is what I mean by HDR. The scene outside is much, much brighter than the scene inside, and these windowsills aren't really full white, but when you up the exposure enough to see what's inside, it looks that way. Um, I'm getting about 6 frames per second in radiosity cache mode. What I'm going to do, though, is do a radiosity render of this scene. Uh, I'm going to start jittering the viewport. This is going to give me my anti-aliasing and switch it to radiosity mode and begin collecting frames. Radiosity mode is going to do that calculation that got us each of these light values, but it's going to do it on every pixel in the scene. That way we get nine or ten passes of this cache building, and then the last pass is done per pixel instead of per triangle. You can see it's not instantaneous, it's actually quite slow. Uh, you probably haven't seen an update yet, but I assure you my computer is still functioning. It's still going there. Um, for anyone who's curious, this computer is a quad-core Phenom 2. It runs significantly better than any of my laptops. You may have noticed the scene has grown significantly more smooth. You no longer see those clear divisions between triangles. Uh, it's still got a lot of grit, so I need to let a bunch of frames collect before this looks like a finished, polished rendering. But we're talking about cutting down rendering times on a scene like this from an hour to maybe five, ten minutes. It took it. Took it 44.9 seconds to render that frame using the frame using the uh, radiosity cache. It'll take 44.9 seconds to render each version of this as it goes along. If I collect five or six versions, I'll get a pretty nice anti-alias, clearing up all of those jagged edges. I'm panning in here to show you the reflective sphere that sits on this shelf. As you can tell, this sphere has been blocking light. So there's a, there's a darker area behind it, but it's not fully black because there is still light coming in from the sides. This sort of reflection, of course, is completely impossible on a GPU. And you can see it's all done in HDR. Those windows are still completely visible if I darken the image. And if I brighten it, I get a good view of the room. What I am going to show you, though, which demonstrates what I'm trying to do here, is this box. This is simply a gray box sitting on a pink shelf. But if you look at the top, it's actually got quite a bit of pink in it. I'm going to do a radiosity pass on this so that you can get an idea of what it looks like when it's been cleaned up a little. And there we go, that's the first pass. You can actually see that we're getting some pretty neat effect through here. These cast shadows are not coming from light sources, they're actually coming from those windows. The windows allow light to come in from the environment map, and as a result, they sort of function like area lights. They create these nice soft shadows nice soft shadow coming in from the left window, but as you can tell, the light hits this wall and reflects over, hits this wall, hits this wall, hits the top of the box, gives it a nice pink hue. Then, as you can see, there's a lot of red coming off of the chair, 
reflecting onto the wall. I'll do a quick radiosity gather on that. And now you can see a better, more complete picture of how that light bouncing off of the chair affects the wall. And even how there's a very subtle shadow coming off of the arms, the, the chair's arm. One last statue to leave you with here. I'm not sure where I got this gargoyle statue, but it's a very nice scanned geometric model. This is half million triangles and we're viewing it in radiosity cache mode, I wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like to view just the radiosity cache on a model so detailed. It may not be clear from what you're seeing on the screen. I am controlling this in real time. This is not sped up in any way. There's my mouse moving. This is all a bunch of high dynamic range flat shaded polygons. One high dynamic range value per polygon telling you how much light is hitting it, multiplied by the surface color. That's all you're seeing here. And yet, to your eye, it probably looks pretty smooth. I can see a bit of the jank because I can see my monitor. I'm viewing, I'm recording this off the screen to show that it is real time. But it's pretty impressive for flat shaded and pretty impressive for real time if you ask me. Let me zoom in on the base. I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to show a couple of models in, I'm going to show a couple of renders, direct captures from the screen that I couldn't really give you the full impact from using the camera. I'd like to thank a couple of people who made this possible. Paul Depebeck of the University of Southern California. He's been doing all sorts of graphics research specifically concerning lighting and light as a study in and of itself. He's basically responsible for all, any of the lighting environments I used. He uh, also made a lot of the groundbreaking visual effects in the Matrix movies possible with his research. I want to thank the as far as I know, nameless people behind the Stanford 3D Scanning Repository. Uh, from them, I got my 500,000 polygon Lucy statue. I think one of their related pages also got me the, uh, the angel statue. Oh no, that was the Georgia Tech Large Models Archive, also free statues for, for you to use. There are a couple of others that I use from time to time I didn't use in this demo, namely the Stanford Dragon, that's uh, 800,000 triangles, and the Happy Buddha statue. I've been using a reconstruction that's at 1 point, oh, there it is right there, 1,087,716 triangles, and it still runs at the same frame rate as everything else. Again, fill rate dependent, not polygon dependent. Thank you for watching.